The number of debtors in China hits a new high. 854 million people are blacklisted. 135 militia boats gathered on a reef in the South China Sea. Aurora seen in Beijing, a sign of great danger in Zhongnanhai. China experiences multiple occurrences of phantom suns. Ancient prophecies foretell the downfall of a dynasty. The United States, Britain, and Australia deepen military cooperation to curb the expansion of the CCP. China is accelerating fake accounts to control social media influence. For the first time in the world, the CCP accepts a Taliban ambassador. The number of debtors in China hits a new high. 854 million people are blacklisted. Since the outbreak of COVID-19 in Wuhan, China's economy has been severely impacted, leading to not only the withdrawal of foreign capital, but also massive layoffs by Chinese companies. The unemployment situation is grim, with many people unable to repay debts, causing a surge in defaults on mortgages and credit loans. According to official Chinese statistics, there are currently 8.54 million people blacklisted by the government for failing to repay overdue loans. The Financial Times reported that since the COVID-19 pandemic, the default rate of Chinese borrowers has soared to a record high, highlighting the severity of China's economic downturn and the obstacles to a full recovery. Data from Chinese courts show that a total of 8.54 million people, ranging from 18 to 59 years old, have been blacklisted by the authorities for failing to repay mortgages, business loans, and other debts. This number accounts for about 1% of China's labor force, significantly higher than the 5.7 million people during the initial pandemic control period in early 2020. The report points out that the surge in the number of defaulters will increase the difficulty of boosting consumer confidence in China, the world's second-largest economy and a key source of global demand. It also draws attention to the lack of personal bankruptcy laws in China, making it difficult to mitigate the impact of the debt surge on finance and society. The blacklist, generated by banks and other creditors filing lawsuits against debtors for failing to repay on time, imposes various economic activity restrictions on those listed. Under Chinese law, blacklisted individuals are prohibited from engaging in many economic activities, including buying plane tickets, making payments through mobile apps like Alipay and WeChat Pay, serving in government positions, and even driving on toll roads. This further hampers economic recovery and suppresses consumer confidence. Dan Wong, Chief China economist at Hang Seng Bank stated that the sharp increase in loan defaults is not just a cyclical issue, but also a structural one, with the situation potentially worsening. The personal debt crisis follows a surge in borrowing by Chinese consumers. Data from the National Institution for Finance and Development, a Beijing think tank, show that as of September this year, Household debt as a percentage of GDP reached 64%, nearly double that of a decade ago. As Chinese consumers increasingly lack funds to maintain a balanced budget, many have stopped paying bills. The unemployment rate among the youth reached a record 21.3% in June, prompting Beijing to stop publishing data. John Wang, a Shanghai resident who was laid off in May, said, I will pay the 28,000 yuan credit card bill when I find a job, but I don't know when that will be. Once blacklisted by the Chinese government, borrowers' lives become even more difficult as they face dozens of restrictions. Jane Zhang, owner of an advertising company in Jiangxi province, described her panic when the court prohibited her from using WeChat to buy food for her child in May due to overdue bank loans I thought my son would starve because I had no cash on hand and all my daily shopping was done through WeChat Pay.
Although the court told her that her life would return to normal once she repaid her debts, she said, With so many restrictions, how can I make money to repay them? One hundred and thirty-five militia boats gathered on a reef in the South China Sea. CCP leader Xi Jinping recently made a rare address to the Coast Guard, asserting the need to defend territorial sovereignty and maritime rights and interests. And after that, the Philippine Coast Guard observed a startling increase in the number of Chinese maritime militia ships within the Philippines' exclusive economic zone, EEZ, at Whitson Reef, prompting them to dispatch patrol ships. On December 3rd, the Philippine Coast Guard released a statement saying that the number of Chinese militia vessels has risen from 111 in November this year to over 135. These ships are dispersed within Whitson Reef. Whitson Reef is located about 320 kilometers west of Palawan Island and approximately 1,000 kilometers from China's nearest mainland, Hainan Island. The statement reads, the Philippine Coast Guard remains steadfastly committed to defending Philippine territorial integrity, sovereignty, sovereign rights, and jurisdiction in the West Philippine Sea, firmly upholding maritime defense, security, and environmental protection. The conflicts between China and the Philippines in the South China Sea have become more frequent. On October 22, the Philippines accused a Chinese Coast Guard vessel and a militia ship of colliding with a Philippine Coast Guard ship and a military supply vessel in the disputed shoal in the South China Sea. Just days before the latest statement from the Philippine Coast Guard, the Philippines conducted joint aerial and maritime patrols with the United States and Australia. On November 29, Xi Jinping visited the Eastern Sea Area Command of the PAP Coast Guard and delivered a speech. This visit marks a rare occurrence in Xi's more than a decade in office. During his address to the Coast Guard, Xi called for the establishment of a comprehensive maritime law enforcement collaboration mechanism and a stern crackdown on maritime illegal and criminal activities. On September 1st this year, the CCP officially implemented the newly revised Maritime Traffic Safety Law, which mandates that five categories of foreign vessels must report to China when entering its territorial waters. In response, Taiwanese strategic military expert Su Ziyun previously told the Epoch Times that the CCP might apply this new regulation to disputed islands, potentially violating international law and exacerbating regional conflicts. He stated, If Beijing starts applying the so-called Maritime Traffic Safety Law to artificial islands from September 1st, other countries passing within 12 nautical miles of these islands might face difficulties or conflicts initiated by the CCP. Aurora seen in Beijing, a sign of great danger in Zhongnanhai. Recently, multiple areas in Beijing witnessed a rare occurrence of red auroras, turning the sky blood red. Experts have analyzed this phenomenon in the context of traditional Chinese culture's belief in the unity of heaven and man, interpreting it as a significant omen of trouble brewing in China. According to reports from mainland China on the evening of December the 1st, netizens in Beijing, Hebei, Heilongjiang, Xinjiang, Inner Mongolia, and other regions captured awe-inspiring aurora displays. That night, Beijing aurora became a trending topic, with unusual recordings of auroras in Beijing's Huairu and Mentougou districts. Videos circulating online showed that around 8 p.m. on December 1st, the sky over Huairo, Beijing, suddenly turned blood red, intensifying in color before gradually fading away. In May of last year, rare occurrences of a blood-red sky were observed in Zhejiang's Zhoushan, Fuzhou in Fujian, and a blood-red river in Baise, Guangxi all of which are closely associated with the top leadership of the Chinese Communist Party, CCP. Commentator Yang Ning wrote in an article on December 3rd, 
emphasizing the traditional Chinese belief in the unity of heaven and man, where celestial phenomena are seen as corresponding to events in the human world. Ancient texts regarded the appearance of a blood-red sky and blood rivers as ominous signs. The occurrence of a blood-red sky in the political center of Beijing is seen as a foreboding sign unfavorable to the high-ranking officials in Zhongnanhai, signifying a perilous situation. Tang Dynasty Taoist Li Chun Feng, in his astrological book Yi Si Zhan, stated, Red gas emerges from the celestial ship, and within a year, someone will proclaim themselves. Other passages from the same text suggest that the appearance of a blood-red sky signifies warfare, famine, injustice, political upheaval, and even bloodshed, putting the regime and the ruler in jeopardy. The article asserts that these celestial signs serve as warnings to those in power, and they have occurred conspicuously and urgently in places closely related to the CCP's top leadership. This indicates a highly precarious situation. For instance, the Chinese folk prophecy book Tiban Tu mentions a white-feathered bird representing the fallen leader of the party, with a tragic end during their tenure, and the character Shi, Shi, can be interpreted as white feathers when broken down. The article concludes that the appearance of a blood-red sky in Beijing is a clear message from the heavens, suggesting a dire situation for the CCP's top leadership. Significant events are likely on the horizon, and these prophecies may come true beyond the control of the party leader. On December 3rd, China expert and professor at New York Fijian University, Zhang Tianliang, stated in the program Tianliang Times that in ancient China, auroras were referred to as red gas, and the color red represents blood. According to the theory of the unity of heaven and man, seeing auroras at mid to low latitudes signifies that significant events will occur in the human world. Zhang Tianliang pointed out that not only did auroras appear in Beijing, but similar phenomena of red skies were observed in Zhejiang's Zhoushan and Fujian earlier. Since Xi Jinping's political career primarily began in Fujian and Zhejiang, and his key officials, such as Li Qiang and Kai Qi, also hail from these regions, these ominous signs occurring in Xi's political stronghold may foreshadow difficulties for Xi himself. China experiences multiple occurrences of phantom suns. Ancient prophecies foretell the downfall of a dynasty. China has recently experienced an outbreak of strange celestial phenomena, with phantom suns appearing in Inner Mongolia and Jiangsu, where three suns were seen in the sky. The ancient Chinese prophecy, as foretold by the Tang Dynasty prophet Li Chunfeng, interprets the appearance of multiple suns as an ominous sign of the downfall of a dynasty. On November 28th at 9 a.m., Inner Mongolia witnessed the rare occurrence of a phantom sun, with many people capturing videos and sharing them online. Videos showed the sun surrounded by a large, circular-colored halo, with two additional, smaller suns appearing on either side. What is this? Wow! This is so astonishing! exclaimed many witnesses. Online information indicates that the phenomenon of the phantom sun in Inner Mongolia lasted for over two hours, starting at 9 a.m. that day. On November 30th, Jiangsu also witnessed the same phenomenon, with a large, colorful halo appearing in the sky above the sun, and many people captured photos to share on social media. While these dazzling phantom sun phenomena left many in awe, they have historically been considered ominous. Ancient Chinese beliefs associated the sun with earthly rulers, and celestial omens were closely linked to those in power. The appearance of two or more suns in the sky at once was seen as a bad omen, signaling the replacement of the ruler and the downfall of a dynasty. There are records of phantom sun phenomena in ancient texts, such as Spring and Autumn Annals, Hei Tu, and Xiaojing Wei.
the Tang Dynasty prophet Li Chunfeng mentioned in Yi Si Zhan that the simultaneous appearance of multiple suns was a sign of the world splitting apart, leading to a period of conflict among princes. He wrote, Two suns appearing together signify plotting among princes, heralding destruction. When the world resorts to arms, unjust rulers will perish. He also referred to the example of Emperor Jin, Yinjia, of the Xia dynasty, stating that the appearance of multiple suns signified the presence of evil spirits. Throughout this year, China has faced unprecedented economic challenges and successive waves of epidemics. Since November, major cities in China have reported overwhelmed hospitals, and social media has shown that many families have been affected by the virus, leading to a significant number of deaths. However, the Chinese Communist Party has been actively suppressing information about the true extent of the epidemic, leading to widespread public discontent. Many observers believe that China is on the verge of significant change. The United States, Britain, and Australia deepen military cooperation to curb the expansion of the CCP. On December 1st, U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin hosted Australian Deputy Prime Minister and Defense Minister Richard Marles and British Defense Secretary Grant Shapps at the Defense Innovation Unit headquarters in California. They discussed AUKUS cooperation matters and strengthened their defense and security partnership. In a joint statement, they mentioned, by combining the strengths of our nations and pooling resources, we provide game-changing capabilities to maximize the strategic and technological advantages of AUKUS. The statement also announced the collaboration items under the first and second pillars of AUKUS. The first pillar is to enhance Australia's nuclear-powered submarine capabilities, jointly developing a new type of submarine to be operational by 2040. The second pillar focuses on cooperation in eight technological areas, including AI, advanced cybersecurity, electronic warfare, hypersonic weapons, and counter-hypersonic weapons. AUKUS is a trilateral defense partnership between the United States, the United Kingdom, and Australia. Wu Setsi, a researcher at the Taiwan Cross-Strait Policy Association, remarked that the military alliance of the U.S., Australia, and the U.K. shares common values in democratic politics and geopolitics. This military collaboration has seen concrete progress. This poses a significant deterrent to China, as they have been trying to expand their influence in the Pacific region. The U.S.-led island chain strategy, the quadrilateral security dialogue, and the AUKUS cooperation have made it increasingly difficult for China to breach this strategic defense line, Wu said. Wu pointed out that the CCP had also been actively seeking to expand relationships with Pacific Island countries, both economically and through security cooperation. The deepening cooperation among the U.S., Australia, and the U.K. makes it harder for China to extend its influence into the Pacific, Su Ziyun, director of the Taiwan National Defense Strategy and Resources Research Institute, stated, For the CCP, it's like building a safety barrier outside China, with the first island chain being a more rigid barrier. The second island chain, primarily led by Australia, is a more resilient barrier. This sends a clear political signal to the CCP, especially under Xi Jinping's tenure, that his wolf-warrior diplomacy and expansionism have hit a snag. Su Ziyun believes that the specific projects undertaken by the U.S., the U.K., and Australia, combining peacetime and defense efforts and extending from undersea to space, are restraining the CCP's expansion and strengthening the international strategic defense against the CCP. The Pentagon announced that the U.S. State Department had approved the sale of training and related equipment worth approximately two billion U.S. dollars to Australia, related to AUKUS. The Pentagon mentioned that the U.S., the U.K., and Australia will test a new method using advanced AI to track CCP submarines, 
They also planned to build three land-based radars capable of detecting, identifying, and tracking space threats up to 22,000 miles away. Wu Setsi As military cooperation between the U.S., Australia, and the U.K. progresses, it will also drive military cooperation in Northeast Asia, including military collaboration between Japan and South Korea, and even the Philippines' role will gradually become more prominent, possibly leading to specific military cooperation with the U.S. meta-warning. The United States, Britain, and Australia deepen military cooperation to curb the expansion of the CCP. On December 1st, U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin hosted Australia China is accelerating fake accounts to control social media influence. Meta, the parent company of Facebook and Instagram, warned in a report published on Thursday, November 30th, that China is intensifying its efforts to wield influence over the populace of other countries through social media and even manipulating public opinion. This makes the Beijing authorities the third largest source of foreign influence operations globally following Russia and Iran. Meta stated in the report that it has shut down five false account networks based in China this year, making China the country with the most false accounts terminated globally in 2023. In comparison, only one China-based false account network was terminated in 2019. However, Meta emphasized that despite Beijing's efforts to peddle its influence through fake accounts in recent years, the effectiveness has been minimal. One of these networks alone consisted of nearly 4,800 fake accounts, creating profiles with fake images, names, and locations that appeared to be ordinary Americans, disseminating divisive political content, apparently iming to sow division in the U.S. ahead of next year's presidential election. This is the most noticeable change in the threat landscape compared to 2020, Ben Nimmo, head of global threat intelligence at Meta Platforms, was quoted by National Public Radio, NPR. The targets of these thwarted Chinese influence operations include netizens in sub-Saharan Africa, Central Asia, Europe, and the United States. Nimmo noted that these fake accounts operated in various ways for seemingly one purpose, to laud China's interests from defending Beijing's human rights record to attacking critics of the Chinese government. It seems like they are taking a global approach and adopting many different strategies. We see some operations on a small scale trying to establish personal personas and also large-scale operations that are clumsy and spammy, Nimmo said. Aside from all originating from China, another commonality is their failure to attract genuine audiences or readers. These Facebook fake accounts used copied fake names and identity photos from the Internet, and some also replicated and reposted statements of U.S. political figures on the X platform. This method of replication and reposting was used for politicians from both parties, including Democrats such as former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, Arizona Senator Mark Kelly, Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer, and Republicans such as Ohio. Congressman Jim Jordan, Tennessee Senator Marsha Blackburn, and Florida Governor Ron DeSantis's presidential campaign war room. It is unclear whether this practice was intended to exacerbate partisan strife, attract an audience among the supporters of these political figures, or make the fake accounts seem more authentic by sharing real posts, Meta's report stated. The other Chinese false account network terminated by Meta was smaller, but more cunning. This network included 13 Facebook accounts and seven groups, mainly targeting Tibet and India. These accounts impersonated journalists, lawyers, and human rights activists, some using the same names and identity photos on the X platform. For the first time in the world, the CCP accepts a Taliban ambassador. The Taliban government in Afghanistan announced on December 1st that the Chinese Communist Party has officially recognized its ambassador in Beijing. This development marks the CCP as the first regime to host a Taliban ambassador since the group regained power two years ago. 
The news has sparked widespread criticism, with public opinion labeling the CCP as a patron of global terrorists and accusing it of colluding with evil organizations. An official statement from the Taliban's Ministry of Foreign Affairs mentioned that Hong Lei, the director general of the Protocol Department of the Chinese Foreign Ministry, received a copy of the credentials from the newly appointed ambassador Asadullah Bilal Karimi. Hong Lei described Karimi's arrival as an important step in further strengthening and expanding the positive relationship between Beijing and Kabul. The CCP's acceptance of the Taliban ambassador has led to heated discussions. On the overseas social media platform X, formerly Twitter, Chinese website, many netizens commented, The Taliban is the Communist Party of Jingang Shan, and the Communist Party is the Taliban of Afghanistan. All dictatorial, oppressive, and corrupt regimes are old friends of the Chinese Communist Party, and they receive strong support with the people's hard-earned money. Some netizens stated, Let the world know who is the real patron of terrorist organizations. Even Russia dares not do such blatant acts, but the CCP does. Look at the friends of the CCP. Russia, the Taliban, North Korea, Iran, etc., all dictatorial regimes that disrupt international rules. Others mocked, birds of a feather flock together, a den of snakes and rats conspiring together, cut from the same cloth, wallowing in the mire. They are all bandits masquerading as nations, which feels bizarre. After the 2001 9-11 attacks, due to the Taliban harboring and refusal to hand over al-Qaeda leader Osama bin Laden, the United States led NATO in a 20-year war in Afghanistan, overthrowing the Taliban regime. Following the withdrawal of U.S. troops from Afghanistan in 2021, the Taliban regained control of the Afghan government. However, it has not been recognized by other foreign governments. Meanwhile, the CCP has continuously sought to develop relations with the Taliban government. In September last year, the CCP became the first regime to appoint an ambassador to Kabul under Taliban rule. In October this year, the CCP invited Taliban representatives to participate in the Beijing Belt and Road Forum. In response, Chen Yonglin, a former political consul at the Chinese Consulate General in Sydney, told Radio Free Asia that the high-profile participation of Putin and the Taliban government in the Beijing Belt and Road Summit gives the impression that China has become the core of an evil alliance.